Good day class. Our topic for today is uh, estimation of parameters. As you all know, we have taken it up. Parameters, ito yung mga information about the population, no? But since hindi natin kaya ang kunin in a short period of time in mga information about the population, we can only estimate. Okay? So, pag-aaralan natin, paano natin ma-estimate? But before that, let's uh, have some definitions and review of our former uh, formula. Alam natin naman yung z value is equal to x bar minus mu of x bar over sigma of x bar. Kung ang variable natin is x bar, then it's going to be as simple as the one on the left. Okay? Kung meron tayong information about the averages. No? Pero kung ang information natin is uh, more on the individual or uh, Let's say, nag-sample tayo ng isang grupo lang. So, we only have information about that group. So, we're going to use the average of that group minus mu of x, which is basically the same as mu of x bar, and sigma of x divided by square root of n, where n is the number of sampled groups. Itong sample groups, let's say, nag-sample ka ng dalawang pung sections, at kinuha mo yung average height ng bawat section, then your n is going to be 20, hindi yung total number of students, no? Or individuals naman. Pwede rin individuals. For example, ano yung number o, or average number of hours studying ng isang student sa isang linggo. So, bawat estudyante magbibigay na ng kanyang average. So, we're talking here of number of averages, okay? So, sometimes, in-estimate lang natin isang value, which is the average. For example, the average height of students or average uh, grade. So, kukuha lang tayo ng isang information, which is the average of the whole class. But also, many times, nag interval estimate tayo, meaning to say, wula natin siguro from ang average grade nila will be from 85 to uh, 90. Okay? With a certain degree of confidence. Ang tawag natin doon is the interval estimate, which is the range of values calculated from a sample statistic and the standardized statistics, such as the Z. And the selection of the standardized statistics is determined by the sampling distribution. Of course, for our purposes, we just assume normally distributed functions, no? Uh, pagdating nyo ng college, uh, when you go to your higher statistics classes, you know, that's the time that you will study uh, other distributions. No? The selection of critical values of the standardized statistics is determined by the desired level of confidence. Again, sino ba nag-determine ng level of confidence? It is the researcher. So if you're the one doing the research, you will decide anong level of confidence ng gagamitin mo. But then, of course, the rule of thumb, as I've said before, kung uh, tungkol sa mga gamot yan or pagkain, usually, tinataasan natin yung level of confidence natin. Okay? May linaw ba? So, it is I. Or, the boss will uh, decide, no? Yung, kung nagtatrabaho na tayo. So, the estimator of the population mean mu is given by the following formula. For point estimate, sa normal distribution, we use summation of all x's or lahat ng values, add natin lahat, divided by n, the sample size, which is exactly the same sa t distribution. And the interval estimate will be x bar plus or minus z multiplied by sigma over square root of n. Similarly, you have x bar plus or minus t multiplied by standard deviation of the sample over square root of n. Very similar except for the z value here on the normal and t values for the t distribution. And you will have sigma if it's given, the so normal, and sample standard deviation for t distribution for using the t, no? And we know that when sigma is unknown but distribution is known to be normal, we can still, or sample size is 30, we can still use the normal distribution or the Z table. 
Meron tayong correction factors for the means, okay, and the proportion. Uh, you would uh, notice and see them in most of the statistics book in college, pero in high school, we will just concentrate on the standard one. Ang wala po ng correction factors. The correction factor will be for means. So, we, we just add and subtract square root of population size minus sample size over population size minus 1. Okay. And for proportion, we have a plus and minus 0.5 over square root of n. By the way, yung una pala is we multiply by our MOE, which is this one, by this factor. Okay, we multiply. Pero sa proportion, we add and subtract. Okay. The distribution of sample means for 95% confidence, meaning to say, yung confidence level natin is at 95%. Um, of course, the total is 100% confidence, which is sure na sure ka which is very unlikely in any experiment, okay? And if you're talking about the normal table, when mu is equal to zero, that means in, in standardized na natin using the formula kanina, uh, at negative 1.96 up to 1.96, yung area under, under this curve from the left side to the right side, from negative 1.96 to plus 1.96, you will get from your table 95% or 0 0.9500. So, ang matitira is 0 0.05. Bahatiin pa natin sa dalawa. So, that means yung area nitong sa left is 0 0.025 at yung area to sa right is 0 0.025 also. Okay? So, that the confidence interval will be from x bar minus 1.96 multiplied by sigma over square root of n to x bar plus 1.96 multiplied by sigma over square root of n. And the probability of that having your mean within that range is 95% or 0.95. Okay? Yun ang ibig sabihin lang na ang confidence level mo ay apalo ng 0.95 or 95%. If you add the correction factor, you will just multiply the left side and the right side by square root of n minus n over n minus 1. Okay, so yun lang naman yung dinagdag with correction factor. So in our example, given that x bar is 1.63 and sigma 1.25, with the sample size equal to 60, if you divide sigma over square root of n, you'll end up with 0 0.161374. And so our range or the confidence interval will be from yung ating mean of 1.63 minus the z value of 1.96 multiplied by this, 1 point, uh, 0 0.161374. And then on the right side, we add 1.96 multiplied by 0.161374. Or our confidence level at 95% will end up with from 1.314 to 1.946. Malina ba? So, our mean of 1.63 will be in the middle of this. And the range from 1.3 to 1.946, we will have 95% confidence. This means that 95% of all sample groups taken will have their means within the boundaries defined as between the range of 1.314 to 1.946. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Kung nag-sample ka ng 100 okay, groups or samples, groups, you will notice that 95 times their averages will fall within this range from 1.314 to 1.946. That is why meron kang 95% chance na yung averages nila magpo-fall dun sa limit na yun. Okay? With the correction factor, mag-iiba lang ng resulta, okay, from uh, uh, magiging 1.323 to 1.937. So, if you look at it, malit na malit lang naman ang difference. 1.314 hanggang 1.946 naging, okay, 1.323 to 1.937. Okay, so these are the summary 
of Z values at different uh, levels at 90, 1.645, at 95%, 1.96, 98, 2.327, and at 99%, 2.575. If you notice, lumalaki yung range, no? From left to right. This means from negative 1.645 to positive 1.645. Okay, abang tumataas yung ating confidence level. Of course, if you have a graph, okay, lumalaki yung area so that our confidence level also increases. And locating that in our normal distribution table, okay, at 95% confidence, 5% lang yung error natin matitira, inati mo sa dalawa, that becomes 0.025 on both sides pag hinahanap mo rito you'll end it up doon sa area ng 1.9 negative, tapos meron kang 6 sa taas. So, negative 1.96 and positive 1.96. Meaning to say, itong 0 0.025, the area below negative 1.96 is 0 0.025. And in the same manner, the area above positive 1.96 will also be 0 0.025. Okay, characteristic yan ng normal table. If you look at the student's t distribution table, which is this formula na hindi natin pag-uusapan na, na dinevelop ni Gosset in 1908, isang statistician siya sa Guinness Brewing Company, nung gumawa siya ng paper, dahil bawal sa kanila ang maglabas ng paper, gumamit siya ng pen name na student. Okay, hanggang sa napansin ng marami na mukhang may sense yung kanyang ginawang formula na ito at yung kanyang distribution na ine-estimate ang isang normal distribution kung sakali mang less than 30 or kakaunti lang ang uh, sample size o kaya naman ang mga information about the population sigma is not known, ine-estimate niya using the distribution na ginawa niya Dinevelop niya. And if you notice, from a decrease of freedom from 1 to 30, lumalapit ng lumalapit pataas ng pataas, palapit sa blue ng standard normal. Okay? Yun ang napansin nila pagka dumadami ang sample size. That is why many statisticians, they drafted the rule of thumb that if it's 30 and above, pwede na mag-estimate ng Z table or normal distribution. Okay, of course, our DF or degrees of freedom is equal to sample size minus 1 for single variable. So, yun ang characteristic. It's also shaped like a normal bell. Okay, bell shape. Medyo heavier lang sa tails. Hindi kumukha ng normal. Talagang smooth na smooth yung pagbaba sa sides, no? And, of course, mas medyo mataba ng konti yung kanyang tails, no? Compared sa normal. And this is how you look at it. Let's say, a 0.05 at 24 degrees of freedom, meaning to say, let's say, n is equal to 25 minus 1, you get 24. Your t value will be 1.71 or 1.711. Okay? So, let's have an example using that. Uh, yung binigay ko sa bilin... Uh, table sa inyo, I already put there the confidence interval. So, kung 95 degrees, or 95 degrees, 95% ang in confidence interval, you look at the table at 0 0.950. So, at 25 sample size, you have a uh, degrees of freedom of 24, you will have 2.064 as your factor, the T factor. Okay? So, applying that, you have x bar 1.63 minus 2.064 multiplied by 0 0.025 because your sample standard deviation is 1.25 or your n is, point, is 25, you get 0.25. So it will be from the range 1.114 to 2.146. That means the probability that you will find the sample means kung nag-sample ka ng 25 is 95%. Okay? Or 95% of the time, the sample means will fall within this 
range of 1.114 up to 2.146. Okay, so that is how you locate the region, uh, I mean the T value under the region of T distribution. Okay, so at 95% con uh, confidence interval, uh, okay, we use 2.571 if n is equal to 6 or degrees of freedom n minus 1 equals 5. So yun, dere dere lang ito. Okay, oh, don't miss or don't lose your uh, file or your con uh, your student's t table that I gave you. Magagamit nyo yan hanggang college. Okay, this implies that the area between point uh, negative 2.571 to positive 2.571 is also 95% at 5 degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, let's talk about percentile using the t-table since at 95 confidence interval, the remaining areas on both sides are 2.5%. Okay. Then, the percentile of the data less than or equal to 2. 571 will be 97.5 percentile. Bakit? Kasi 0.95 dito, no? Hanggang doon lang sa isang area niya na negative 2.571. Kaya lang, to the left of 2.571, iyan sasama natin yung 2.5%. So, 95% plus 2.5%, you'll end up with 95, uh, 97 any half percent okay clear so we're not talking only of confidence interval when we look at the t table we can also look at the area below the t value or in short the percentile uh, in, i'll give more example on the percentile uh, wherein you can apply yung sinasabi kong ina-add mo yung leftmost area nagiging one tail Okay, so sa comparison, going back, yung pink na to, uh, degrees of freedom equals 1, tapos naging 5, naging 25. And if you look at the normal, very close sa normal, yung 25. As a matter of fact, yung 30 would already assume almost the normal. Okay, so we have here the appropriate form of estimator of the population mean. Ulitin lang natin x bar is equal to summation x over n. So you have x bar plus and minus z multiplied by sigma over square root of n for interval. Or you use the t factor multiplied by s over square root of n for t distribution. Okay? So I think that's all. And the next one that we are going to talk about is for proportion estimation. Good day class. I hope you enjoy. Bye-bye.